right. Um, we are ready to open the hearing on a proposed project under safe plan review for RGFA. Also, it's, it's a scenic road, too, isn't it? Is this also a scenic road? Well, well, yeah. This trigger, yeah. This triggers the scenic road provision also, I think. <coughs> I think Glen Road is a scenic road. Okay. So it's, it's RPFA and scenic roads for 441 Glen Road. This is, a, this is new construction. We've given this about 45 minutes of time. Um, and um, for the for people making the presentation, if you could try to hold your presentation to say 20 minutes or so, that would give us a, a, some time for planning board comments and then time to open up the floor for comments um, from the floor. Um, before we start, uh, some introductions. My name is Al Adelot. I'm the chairman of the planning board and the other board members. Roy Chattelbash. Steve Alpha member. David Anderson. Susan Wright. Let's see where it's coming from. All right. Um, also, I have I have a question that I would appreciate Betsy, you're you're taking a look at it at some point, and that is that this is a sub. This is we're doing this under. It's part of a subdivision of a, of a parcel, and and. As I understand it, the Zoning Board of Appeals created two parcels out of out of one parcel, um, one of which doesn't have frontage, so it's not a buildable lot. But the resulting parcel that does have frontage doesn't have sufficient frontage, so it is not a conforming lot. And so my question is, the Zoning Board of Appeals, when they created this, they're going to have to issue a special permit for this. But what is the theory for creating a, non a new non-conforming lot on which you then allow construction? I don't know why you would do that. Well, that's my question. Um, that's what happened. Um, okay, my understanding that this parcel has a 1970s house on it, it has a portion of the property that is in a conservation restriction. No, it's two, it's, it's listed as two lots. Um, two separate lots. It's lot. a five-acre parcel, and two a, two plus acres has a conservation restriction. No, I think it's was subdivided as a, a separate lot. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, but, take a look at the zoning but, board of appeals the, decision, the, if you could, okay. because I, I think you'll find it's two lots. And then, then my question is, if it is two lots, they created a, non -con a new non-conforming lot that is now going to have construction on it. And, and so, I mean, I, just to set the foundation for the site plan review, you know, okay. what are we reviewing and, and okay. how has that happened? So. Okay, I will look into that. Good. Um, right. I will also note that I received a call from the architect today and there's some revised architectural plans that are being presented tonight that I have not seen. Oh. Um, I saw a revised set um, about, I was given a revised set about a week ago. But, it, so, but that, the revised set you were given is not the set that's going to be presented tonight? That is correct. We do have copies of that set. All right. The only revisions to it are based on grade information that we adjusted for you are. Chris Russ from Young Grace and Fix. Um, and there's some cabana drawings on there that weren't issued with the original. Okay. I, I've got to say, I, I have a serious problem about getting last minute submissions that nobody's taking a look at. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to have to do something about it. Yeah, my advice in the future is don't accept this when you're just like at the 11th hour. I just found out this afternoon. Right. Um, but we'll talk about that at the end of the meeting. Yeah. Um, all right, who's going to do the presentation? Who's uh, starting off? Those three of us, I'll open up. Okay. Eric Swenson from the McDowell Company. Yeah. Uh, I just want to start out with a few changes since our site meeting that we had. Um, the lim and then we'll go into specifics about oh, each one of these through the, each discipline. Uh, the limited work has been reduced by se approximately 17,000 square feet. The net earth work has re been reduced from 5,300 uh, cubic yards to 1,100 cubic yards. We've re, uh, 
raised the, house, the elevation of the first floor to facilitate less cut in the rear yard, went from a seven foot cut to a four foot cut, reduced the tree removal from 131 trees to 99 trees, and then uh, we moved the house away from 445 Glen Road by 11 feet, uh, allowing for the property or the, uh, the natural vegetation to be maintained as it, as it was as we discussed on site. And then uh, we removed all drainage structures downgrade from downgrade, reducing uh, grading, and re replaced the, the proposed septic amendment with a new system that removes everything from the conservation restricted area. And then finally, we, re we removed uh, one large pool of from the pool. All right, just, just for the sake of people looking at us on television. Yes. This is your first time presenting to us, so you're sure. talking about changes. Gotcha. And we no, no, that's all right. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll set. I'll just set the background. Okay. You presented your team presented materials to the planning board at a site walk. Correct. And you are taking comments from that site walk and now presenting changes to the materials that the planning board and neighbors saw at that site walk. And so what you're presenting tonight are the changes from those original documents. You got it. Okay. okay. And I'll open it up for Brian. Thank you. For the record, my name is Brian Nelson. I'm an engineer with Metro West Engineering. And I'll start off with the neighborhood RGFA board. I do have some 11 by 17s if anybody would like. Okay. board and north going straight up the page. Start off with 455 Glen Road, which is located um, a little bit northwest of the property. It's a two-story colonial with a gross floor area of 6,536 feet, and it's located right here in the detached garage. 445 Glen Road is located just immediately southwest of the property, shown in this photo right here. Um, it's got a gross floor area of about 2,800 square feet. Um, parcel to the north is presently a vacant lot. Um, so no gross floor area applies to that property. This is a picture of the property on the Locust 441 Glen Road, um, two-story contemporary style house, about 3,200 square feet for gross floor area. And then southeast of the property is 425 Glen Road, which is shown in this photo right here. It's got a gross floor area of about 8,364 square feet. We'll jump over to the south side of Glen Road and We've got uh, number 424, which is shown in this photo right here. Uh, Colonial again, style house, uh, garage on the right hand side. Gross floor area is about 6,800 square feet. Uh, next one up is 432 Glen Road, which is another two story house. Uh, gross floor area of about 5440, so 5,440 square feet. And we've got two more on the southerly side. We've got 438 Glen Road, which is set back quite a bit. From the southerly side of Glen Road, it's actually this right here, contemporary style house with a gross floor area of about 5,800 square feet. And we've got, last one on this board is number 444 Glen Road, um, which is a two-story colonial style, again, setback, probably a couple hundred feet off the road, um, with a gross floor area of about 3,700 <coughs> square feet. Okay. I'd just like to point something out. Betsy, that's shown as a lot. Zero. Lot to the north. Yeah. 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 That showed us a lot. Not just the conservation right. district. Where is lot eight dash ten? It's just the assessor's lot. Not yeah. fifty six lot eight dash ten. So they probably no. took lot eight um, as they subdivided it. One stayed lot eight. Livable for the camp. Lot eight. That's right. Right. Yeah. So it must be net. I guess a, a net gross. Is, is GLA gross livable? That's correct. Without the garages? Yes. That what it is? Yeah. There is, um, for the, the um, abutting houses we've represented, the average RGFA is about 5350 uh, square feet. Uh, I'm going to switch now to the existing conditions. Um, Glen Road's located at the bottom of the page. Again, north going straight up. Um, our driveway starts at the southeasterly property corner, kind of winds in a northwesterly direction up behind the existing house, which is shown in brown right here, 
there's a detached garage a little bit northwest, about 50 feet or so northwest of the house with a turnaround loop. Um, just to give you a little bit of perspective, uh, our property has about 5.0 acres of land. Um, it's designated as Western Assessor's Map 56, Lot 8, located in the Residence A zone. Um, Wait a sec. So why is there a differential between right. what you've yeah. shown on How this and what you've shown on that? Really, it's it's 5.0. On, oh, that's yeah. not including the lot number vacant lot. That's yeah. that's correct. This is different ownership of north. Okay. So this, all right. No, but what's, what but about that was this all one, one lot. This one right here. Yeah. That's a separate lot. So we're looking at just this lot, which is 5.0 acres. Okay. But, but this is the one that created. has. This is the one that's also cut in half, right? I mean, do, isn't this lot now? No. There is a former lot line. These. This was combined some years ago. This parcel fell into the same chain of title as this, but the parcel to the north. But is that's a new lot line. That this part is of the <coughs> horizontal line is a new lot line. This one is relatively new. Yes. Relatively. Well, I mean, that was created by the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's correct. Right. So the, that the, okay. the frontage it stays the same. So yeah. the lot configuration changed. That's that's the point I was trying to make earlier. But did they have? Did this lot have frontage? On another, no. uh, did this have frontage on another way? No, uh, but it's a different way. configuration lot now. Right. Okay, I'll look okay. into it. There is a conservation restriction line that runs um, about 50 feet or so in from the northerly boundary, runs across here and comes down in a southeasterly direction and comes over here. So this portion and the northerly slope <coughs> are conservation restricted. The existing uh, soil absorption system for the house is located uh, kind of in the center northerly portion of the property, and a portion of it actually does extend into the conservation restriction area. Um, elevations, there's a high point roughly along the northerly edge. Uh, we're roughly about elevation 300 up here. We drop approximately 40 feet in a southerly direction towards Glen Road. Um, the existing impervious area on the property, so with ledge outcrops, um, the house and the driveway is about 21,282 square feet. There is a wetland located um, on the southerly or the southeastern side of the property. It's shown kind of in this goldish color right here. We've got a 25 foot no alteration zone and a 100 foot wetland buffer zone. Uh, we have been to the Conservation Commission. They opened up a hearing on May 6th and we're actually continuing with them until uh, next week, June 24th. Uh, if there are no questions with this, I'll go to the proposal. Actually, before you do that, if you could, if we could set the presentation up sort of in the corner over here yeah, so here? that pe yeah, people in the audience could see it in addition to people on the, on the planning board, that would be helpful. Sure. So I'm still confused. This is a five plus acre lot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, but a certain part of it is now under conservation restriction. Right. How much is billable? What do you get for your buildable lot? Uh, I would say about three three quarters acres. I don't know the number offhand, but again, this portion is um, is restricted. The majority of the lot is not. How big is the not. restriction? Restricted. It's like two and a half. Two I'd say it's quarter. it's probably about um, about an acre and a quarter. That's well, an acre and a quarter. I thought you said two and a quarter earlier. That's what I thought it was. I can. I don't have the number. The exact number, but we can certainly get right, the number so. to you guys. All right. Done. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to actually. I'm, I'm stand on the other side of the. Uh, oh, on the other side. <coughs> yeah, you're standing in front of it. Uh, proposed site plan. The orientation is the exact same way. Uh, Glen Road located on the southerly portion of the property, north heading straight up the page. Um, I should put the right board. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Proposed house is shown in brown. In this location right here. Is that the house we saw at the sidewalk? This house has moved. Actually, the house you saw at the sidewalk. The is, this is the new and improved. That's okay, correct. The um, the old footprint of the house is shown in red. Uh, so the house has shifted in a northeasterly direction, away from the abutting properties to the southwest. Um, for a little bit of reference, the existing house is shown in blue in this location here, and the existing driveway is basically. The proposed driveway mirrors the existing driveway to a location about here. The existing driveway is actually shown in blue running up in this direction here. Um, <coughs> the first floor elevation for the proposed house we've raised at one foot from the original submittal, so it's elevation 280.3. Um, the average existing grade plane for the new house location is elevation 278.6, which is um, 
about eight tenths of a foot lower than the original submittal. Um, our proposed ridge elevation is elevation 315.1. And the proposal also calls for a terrace out behind the house, um, pool located just opposite the garage, and a cabana located um, pretty much at the northerly extent of the building envelope here. Uh, the proposed program introduces about 6,800 square feet of new impervious area for a total of about 28,000. Um, We've got a new six bedroom septic system, um, which will be in a similar location to the um, existing, but we have slid it out of the conservation restriction area, and that was a request from the Conservation Commission as well. Um, runoff from the roof surface of the house, um, the cabana roof, the terrace, the upper portion of the driveway, which runs into the garage, and the front entry uh, driveway up here will all be routed to the subsurface infiltration system, which is located in this location here, um, about 60 feet east of the house. The original submittal had a smaller system here and a smaller system here. We've eliminated this system, consolidated into one, uh, with the attempt to really leave a wider buffer on the southwesterly side of the property. Um, with the infiltration system in place, we've also got a rain garden that's proposed to catch a sliver of drainage from the middle portion of the driveway, and that's located here. Um, we will take another look at this um, in terms of trying to modify that structure or maybe going with something different <coughs> and uh, well received with the Conservation Commission, so we're going to take a look at that. Um, we have done some minor regrading to the driveway, and um, really with the intent of, we know this section of Glen Road is, is um, historically pretty well, pretty poorly drained. So with the stormwater controls in place, the regrading of the driveway and the rain garden, we do reduce runoff to Glen Road by rate, in terms of rate and volume by about 50%. So there's a fairly significant reduction in the amount of water that will make its way toward Glen Road. Um, <coughs> runoff rates in a southwesterly direction have been reduced on the order of about 5 to 10%. So there will be an improvement, um, certainly a reduction in the rates and volumes of runoff heading in a southwesterly direction as well. And a lot of that's due to just bringing the limited work um, quite a bit in from the original submittal. Uh, the net earth removal is um, just about 1,100 cubic yards. So we've had a pretty significant reduction from the original submittal, about 4,000 cubic yard net reduction. Um, and how did you achieve that? We did a few different things. Um, by shifting everything to the northeast, we eliminate some of the earthwork here, raising the grade in the back um, on the order of two feet and, and kind of making the slope a little bit more gradual as we head to the north. Um, same thing with over here, the earthwork has uh, certainly gone away a little bit and we've pulled the limit of work in over by this retaining wall. So the combination of those things has really um, reduced the amount of earthwork um, in general. We do have an operation and maintenance plan um, proposed for the site and um, <clears throat> just would like to, before I turn it back over to Eric to talk about landscape, we'd just like to again emphasize that you know, in terms of runoff toward Glen Road in a southerly direction, runoff in a southwesterly direction, we do have some pretty significant reductions. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Eric. Just maybe I've missed it. But, um, <coughs> what is the what is the proposed RGFA for the it, new house? It is ten thousand one hundred and nine square feet, including the cabana the garage, and So it's roughly three times the, the area of the surrounding houses, average of the surrounding houses. If you add them all up. Two times. Two times. Two times. Of, of the immediately abutting houses. Oh, yeah, I, I believe it's I was looking for specific numbers. It, it didn't look like an ended up that, but, uh, you know, <coughs> the, you know, the 2,500, 1,500, 1,600. Yeah, the average I don't is get 5,000 out of it. I'm just saying. There are a couple larger houses. 455 Glen Road has a pretty big G uh, gross floor area, and 425 Glen. So um, abutters on either side have uh, gross floor areas up in the 8,300. They're not, on, they're not on, your, on your chart here. There should be. Yeah. Here's this yeah. one. Yeah, this so one, which is here, um, 425 is here. This is 6,500. Mm -hmm. And this is. You know, we've got a, we have a couple that are like oh, this is five, 
Okay, so that's about 68. All right, I get it. Okay, twice as big. Okay, so I'm going to go through the landscaping. First is the uh, proposed tree removal plan. Uh, as you see, we're, <coughs> we're maintaining the existing road as you get up to about this point, and then the trees that are being removed are in, in towards the rear of the site, nothing out towards the, the road. Um, and we have a total of 99 trees to be removed, and Total trees to remain on site 487. The uh, you're counting the conservation area. Yes, that is. Where you site. really can't cut any really trees down anyway. Yeah. Um, and then we've since our site walk. I'll respond to one other thing. We have saved this portion uh, over here as we talked while we were there. Anything below slope, below that ledge profile, mm -hmm. was uh, was saved due to the the relocation of the grading as well as the allotment. There were a lot of big trees in the land book. They're all gone, right? We actually uh, were able to save some of those very large yeah, trees, the 30 plus, inches. Right. Uh, plus, um, we, we saved two of those and two 20 inch, as well as, uh, which were all located in this area here, and those were deciduous trees. We'll go into the lighting plan. Um, what we have here are far off the road, first post light, uh, off the, all, just as a side note, all the, the lighting is dark sky compliant, either it is shielded or has frosted glass. Um, so the first post light, well set back off the road. Um, the driveway doesn't have a straight shot down the drive, it curves in, so you, you minimal visuals from the road in terms of lighting. Uh, three, three proposed post lights, some path lights along the front court. Uh, all lights in the front here are under coves, so they're either built in or under a cove. And then as you come around the house, there are uh, lights for the, the garage area. Some path lights here, in-step louvered lights uh, in the rear pool terrace as well as in the wall. And then some path lights along the back. And then at each exit where needed, there are uh, lights per coat. One per or two? Um, we have one, it's actually two, two at this point, yeah. You, you, the coat only requires one. Okay. Okay. So what's your total? Our total is uh, 18,778 lumens. So we're, we're below the, the lumen count. And we did, as I said, we did remove one of the larger pool lights. Quick question. Yes. What is that four court? This? Yeah. It's a combination of pavers and uh, gypsum. And, and what? Gypsum. And gypsum. And, and what is its purpose? Uh, the purpose is to, is because we're so far set off the road mm -hmm. and we have a wetland situation here where we don't want people parking over on, on the, in, within this, we've provided a formal area for the front mm -hmm. so that you can park without having to go all the way around the backside of the house. And on, on a side note, that is in keeping with what the rest of the neighborhood has, as I can show you later in the presentation. So this is the, the lighting uh, spec sheets. Um, I won't get too in depth with these, just note they're all dark spec compliant. And then here's the, the planting plant. Um, so as you enter, we've included some uh, sugar maples along the, the drive court. Uh, just for to accentuate some of the turn, and then from there we did some green <coughs> columnar pears, uh, some green beeches in the front here, and then uh, some Cleveland flowering pears up against the house to break up the facade. Um, and then I'll get into the surroundings. So here we have provided on the top of slope uh, visit locations for some evergreen trees, Norway spruces, uh, 10 to 12 foot height. Um, so that, so that it, as you're, if you were to include these within this buff, the, the setback area, the height changes there, would you wouldn't get anything out of it. You'd actually just be screening the natural grade instead. So by putting them on top of the grade, we're helping screen this section of the house. Um, and as a note, we've repositioned the house even further so that you have a screen here, and it's the, the short side of the property that this property is looking at, which is the closest property. 
short side of the house. Um, and then in the back, as requested by uh, Kim, she requested that we put some low, some uh, trees in to infill where we were, we had cut down some some other items. So in there, we've got some Rutgers dogwood, uh, which are flowering, and then underneath all that, some winterberry and some rhod rhododendron. Uh, just in this portion, which is uh, to screen, if at all possible, anything coming from the neighbor there, which due to the profile is very, very minimal, and I'll show you that in a section later in the presentation. Uh, I'm going to turn the page. Is there any other questions on this? Go ahead. We'll ask questions at the end of it, though, too. So this shows the sections. This is 441, which is 445, which is this here uh, section coming through. As you can see, there is a uh, the yard, a growth of trees, a meadow where there's a septic system for this house, and then this naturalized area that we had discussed before. You see the trees here. This is what the front facade would potentially look like, and then going up the hill, that is where our septic is over here. And then just for reference on the next sheet, We'll break this up into two. One will be from the house to this house, and the other will be from this, this one to this one. So 455 Glen Road, which is the house towards the back of the property. Um, as you can see, there's a natural grade that comes up here. We plant it on top of that. And then, so if you were to look through this expanse, you would uh, actually just see the very top of the house there from even the second floor of that house. Uh, and then you can see our old line, which was our old cut line here for the grade, and how we've graded that out over that uh, since we talked on site. And the same goes for this one. This side you can actually see the screening trees. I didn't want to show the, uh, the buffer trees just because of the way the cut was. And then you have the driveway here, the, the large wetland uh, buffer, and then 225 land. And that is all. Okay, let's look, look at the architecture. <coughs> Thank you and good evening. My name is John Gleiston. I'm the architect uh, for the project. Um, we have designed an RGFA house of the square footage of 10,109 square feet, including a uh, cabana of 386 square feet, which is located behind the pool on the site plan. Um, it is a two and a half story shingle style facade with a first story stone uh, veneer applied to it. Um, it is um, <coughs> intended to uh, maintain a, a traditional historical style of many of, of the houses that have, uh, exist in Weston and that we have also designed and built in Weston. Um, the intent is to uh, diminish, it is a large house, but the intent of the design is to diminish the scale by breaking up the massing into distinct parts and to accentuate the uh, roof scape. So this is the front facade on the top. You see, uh, uh, as you come around to the garage core, the end of a three-story, I mean, a three-car garage. Uh, on the opposite side, which will uh, face the nearest abutter, um, the massing is broken down to uh, a lower wing um, closest here, accentuated by a fieldstone chimney. Uh, and then behind it, the main mass is behind that chimney with another uh, main living room chimney. So there'll be some, I think, I hope, uh, breakdown of scale, and you'll look at some nice field stone chimneys uh, behind the screen of trees that when planted will be here and over a course of maybe uh, another five to ten years will grow up and then you'll have these chimney uh, uh, field stone sticks to look at. Moving onward uh, to the rear facade that faces um, the raised grade. Uh, it is uh, the main portion here of the family room, a one-story breakfast room, the uh, broken down scale of the garage wing over here, the short wing that abuts the closest neighbor. 
These are three views of the cabana. It's built into the hill, uh, as you see here. What you'll see facing the pool will be a pergola that extends out about 12 feet. It has an open uh, storage capacity, um, and it's intended to complement the style of the main house. And also I would add, um, and I apologize for the, um, the last minute delivery of drawings. It was, we were, uh, there's been no changes to the facade design or the plan design of the house. We had to recalibrate the metrics on the roof ridge for the recommended changes to raise the grade. So the grade was raised 12 inches for the first floor and we had to in turn lower our ridge a foot by adjusting, if I bring up this plan, the main ridge height here. So many other elements of the house are four to six feet lower than the higher ridge, but the high ridge needed to be reduced and hence the reason for our uh, resubmission. That's it. Otherwise nothing else has changed other than you had not seen elevations of the cabana that were shown on the original plan, so we wanted to share those uh, with you. So high, high, how high is your highest? So we are currently now six inches below the maximum allowed. Thirty-seven feet. We're at thirty-six. 36, 36. Uh, six. six. We had to reduce it, I think, somewhere between a foot and a foot and a half. We were further below, but in order to accommodate mm -hmm. reducing the cut, which is very important, mm -hmm. uh, going you know from five thousand to eleven mm hundred -hmm. cubic feet, we raised the house, and we just had to adjust the architecture. Mm -hmm. So, so the. The net effect is that the ridge never really changed. We just raised the house up and then reduced uh, the pitch of this main roof uh, to, to stay under uh, the 37 maximum. So next in our architectural floor are the floor plans. Um, so uh, the house is a linear house. It has a short face uh, to the abutting neighbor. Um, it, it, it spreads out so we have the garage, uh, the main house here, there's a mud <coughs> wing, and the main living room is on the far end, creating a more uh, diminished wing. So again, breaking up of the massing and scale. Second floor accentuates that with the roots cutting into the mass. And then finally, we're going to the third floor. But, you know, what I need is to have the flip-ups like my landscape uh, designer instead of these fighting boards. But so that there's a small third floor, uh, it's really just a shed dormer, and then the cabana is just a big storeroom where they can move in their furniture if it's raining and has these like collapsible doors and it's kind of sort of a classic um, design. Any, any questions? What's the basement look like? The basement, um, to be quite honest, uh, we haven't designed it. It's just a below grade. It'll have the usual program, perhaps around 1,800 to 2,200 square feet of rec room, exercise room. You know, uh, um, we expand the rec room to include the home theater, room storage, mechanicals. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's, there's no grand sports court. Mm -hmm. I promise you, if they do, I'll leave the job. I, I, I'm sick of sports courts. Um, and uh, all the hydrology and the removal detail. Mm -hmm. So this will be a plain Jane basement with sort of standard program. Okay. Any other um, people presenting tonight? I believe that concludes our formal presentation. Thank Good. you. Good. All right. Um, before we get comments and observations from our consultants, um, I'd just like to say that that uh, we received yesterday a letter from uh, Philip and Lucy Saunders, next uh, abutters to the project, um, with uh, some comments and uh, suggestions as to conditions that we might want to consider. It's a, it's a three and a half page letter, so I won't read it into the record, but um, because I. I like for us to get home before 12.30 tonight anyway. Um, that would break a record. Uh, but it, I just wanted to, perhaps what we could do is, um, for people that would like to take a look at it, 
if we could post it on the on the mm -hmm. website and people could could look at it, and then we could also give it to the applicants uh, for their that consideration. That letter was based on the prior plans. On the prior on plans. On the plans that were not submitted, the, not the ones that we've seen tonight. The ones where the Cabana plans and the... When you say plans, you mean the architectural drawings. Right. They, 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 but in the, the site plan... And the, 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 the landscape. And the landscape plan has changed yeah. since the letter, since the 17th? Yes. Correct. Okay, this is the 18th. So, so it does everything, the landscape plan and the architectural plan. The Saunders plan reviewed the, the round of plans that we got last week. These are slightly changed. Yeah, yeah. okay. But it, it, so if I, I heard you correctly, it, the elevation, the only thing that's changed on the elevations is the ridge height. That's lower because the grade right. moved right. up. So, so for the record, you're correct. Uh, the, the 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 technically they've changed, but in substance and and meaning, they. I think they the same done. thing. You can say the same thing for the landscape plans. I just want to make sure that people see what uh, abutters are saying. Mm -hmm. so. um, are there any highlights? Well, I'd rather not go. You know. Uh, because I think of some of, a lot of the things that, that, that they're talking about, we'll probably talk about ourselves tonight. So, okay. um, having said that, starting off with uh, engineering, what, Dave, what's your reading on the current situation with respect to the site engineering? Well, I've asked, I talked to Brian today, and I asked just for because there's a lot of ledge on the site, some shallow ledge. Um, they already poked a lot of test holes probably like 15 or 18 of them in the site already. Um, so I ask that the, we have test holes in the two proposed infiltration areas. One of them surrounded by three. I said just do one in the middle because the other one, which is the foundation drain, we should have one over there as well. Generally, with things coming in, it's less strained. I, I think I'm also reviewing this for conservation, or they, they've asked, or it's kind of like they're riding on our you know, uh, on our coattails for this. So the rain garden, which is a, so that's a vernal pool to the east. Uh, the concern, the conservation concern with the rain garden is that if there's standing water in it, that the critters would get confused if it's the wrong time of year and maybe go to that and then get caught high and dry if that dries up versus going to the actual vernal pool. So we asked them to look at turning that into something other than a rain garden. Um, and addressing some infiltration that way. And what else, Brian? We talked. It was the rain garden. It was the test Testings. the test holes. It was the like perforated infiltrations kind of yeah. leading to those areas. And that was about it. Generally, the, the you know, it's not a complicated stormwater plan, which is what I like and why I want like a couple test holes right where we're putting these things. It's not depending on a lot of things to happen correctly for it to work. Basically, it's a, just a big, large um, infiltration system where they're going to take all the water from essentially the developed area and put it into it. And the balancing act, too, is with conservation. Is we, you don't want to dry up the, um, the vernal pool, so we're trying to match volumes going to that as well, or just not, not decrease it too much. Okay. What about previous pavement? You, it's got not really, a lot of, you got a lot of pavement there. It, it's not really a site for it. There's shallow ledge, a lot of spots. And then, you know, if you look where the septic system is and the infiltration system, those are deep soils. But from, like, the house moving back, it's all shallow soils. So I, I, I don't think you get, like, a, a deep section in a lot of those spots, and then you could also kind of maybe paint yourself into a corner. You said, oh, I'm going to make the driveway all porous pavement. You can't get the underpinning. Oh. You, oh. you can't, you can't Doesn't go soak it up and yeah. distribute it. Yeah, so or, or if you do, it could be hitting a, you know, the line of ledge and it could be yeah. shooting out the, down the bottom. Yeah. Right. Which I've actually seen on that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it, it's addressing the neighbors to the to the south, he, he he actually broke up his analysis so that there's like a design point each at like each neighbor to the south plus Glen Road. So we're not you know 
you guys don't know, like some engineers will just amalgamate everything and say, oh, look, it's overall it's doing this, but you know, we, we look, you know, at the, like the three neighbors, well, the two neighbors in the one road, you know, plus the own pool, but I mean, I'm speaking for the product, so. Um, I think that's more I talked about the stormwater than I have in the last couple of years. So is your definitely going to be blasting? Uh, yeah, if they're going to have a basement, it looks yeah. like it. Yeah. yeah. Do, you know, do, you, do you have an, an idea of how much material you've got to take out? How many cubic yards of ledge for the for the foundation? Yeah, have, well, for the basement and foundation. We haven't calculated that. It's a because it's a big footprint. Yes. So we're we're back to above 1,100 cubic yards. I don't think we know yet. Yeah. So that's actually. Well, well, yes, we, we, we reduced it 17,000, right? Is that right? I'm just I've jotted down numbers. Okay. Well, Brian, can you just we're down to eleven hundred, but that, that doesn't include the foundation. That doesn't actually. include the foundation. That's correct. So what does that do? Well, it, it, it well, depends on where the ledge is. It's a subtotal, is what it is. It's not yeah. a gross. To, exactly. Gross there's, there's more of a balance now between the cuts and the fills on site. Mm -hmm. So there will be the same amount of excavation for the foundation, or a little bit less actually, because we pulled the foundation up a foot in relation to the original submittal. Um, but assuming some of that material can be Basically, or, or the majority of that material can be you know, processed on site and, and used as fill material. So, we've just basically, through the regrading and raising things up, we've eliminated or we've reduced the net earthwork calculation. Mm -hmm. the, the have you reduced of, the net blasting that you're going to have to do for this basement? So it's going to be a there would be a slight basement. reduction because that basement is a foot or so higher than the original submittal. But it's going to be a lot. So, yeah. I think we're going to look at. You know, time, the, the, time evolved for the, the neighborhood. This, this turns into this turns into can turn into a colossal headache. Is, yeah. As we know from, for example, so turn into Hidden Road, Sunset or Hidden. Yeah. Um, it just it gets to be mm. uh, a big issue. Um, Would you like us to prepare a blasting plan? Well, we're going to probably put considerable re uh, conditions on the on blasting. It's going to exceed the state standards. I mean, that's that's where we are because of our past experience with blasting, or or hammering, hammering can you know sometimes seen given as the is a is a good alternative to blasting because then you don't get the shocks, but you, instead you get weeks of hammering, um, which can be even more disruptive to people. So it's it's something that we really um, drill down on quite a bit. Yeah, we have an yeah. yeah. Well, our model our model for our excavation will be what we did at Twenty Four Meadowbrook, um, which I think went fairly smoothly, where, where we bla we had probably five days of, of blasting, um, and the rest was just drilling. Yeah, that was the one with the sports court, was it? The deep sports court. Was that, wasn't that the, wasn't that the basement sports court? I, I wish I never do it in another sport, not, not for the record, but yeah. there's such a headache. Yeah. Um, how many days of drilling? Five days of blasting, how many, I mean? The drilling, uh, it goes on for a while, it's, it's probably three weeks. weeks of drilling, How something many? like that. Three weeks? Three solid. Something like that. When you say drilling, are you talking about hammering? Jack hammering, right? No, no, not, not hammering, not the boop, 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 yeah. but, but just drilling holes into the ledge where you put the explosives um, in, in. Oh, so that's quiet. That's not. That's relatively quiet. That's not the noisiest thing. But yeah. then, so you drill all your holes and then you you charge them and then you do your blasting? Yes, you, you'll do, you go section by section. You drill a series of holes in a section, you blast that and then you move on to the next section. And it's all highly regulated. The fire department observes every... We, we know about the regulations. Yeah. We, we, but as I say, yeah. we're going to go beyond what's what's highly regulated because we we know the backstory on a lot of the yeah. experiences that people have had with blasting. That's yeah. fine. We, we, we regulate ourselves more than they, is required anyway. So, so I'm sure we'll be on the same page. Yeah. Okay. Cam Landscaping. Um, it's an improvement from what we saw. I did work with Eric a little bit further beyond their last submission to try to save some more of those bigger trees in the backyard. Um, I think you've gotten four additional out of that, which is good. Um, I am still concerned about that one row of Could evergreens to the southwest yeah. neighbor. And learning from past experiences, I would highly recommend that if you decide to approve this, that there's a condition that says 
if at any point it's determined that the ledge is going to either need to be cut into more or the trees can't fit in those holes, we come back and take another look at it. We yeah. learn from Lauren um, to not have that situation again. How close are they to the foundation? I mean, as this week's site walk would show us, when we do a very large scale tree very, very close to the house, the owners 10 years in hate it because yeah. they've got the tree brushing up against the foundation. So, I mean, if you've got enough room to actually put in some sizable trees up there, or you, you do, these or are, are you right on it. These are actually about uh, 8 to 11 feet from the house. Yeah, well, that's, that's not much, but what's the species of the tree? They are uh, Norway spruce, 10 to 12 feet. Yeah. Well, we all know what they do. Yep. They get huge. And that's, that's, that's tomorrow's problem. Training. That's tomorrow's problem, which we literally just dealt with on Tuesday, and it was uh, very unpleasant. Yeah, so we need something there. I we know. need something there, but we need room for it. Well, we he, need here's, room to be placed. Here's what I, here's here's the, the the location of the house is is the key to the whole, this whole site plan, um, and especially that the, the, that part that's sort of sticking down to the lower yeah. left. Yeah. And and so what's the way I look at the site plan? What's driving the bus mm -hmm. is the the the, loca the house location bus is mm -hmm. the is the vehicular court the side accessed garage. garage because everything has to move south to accommodate that turn in. Mm -hmm. If that changes, you could move the house up. The thing that's blocking moving the house up is that is that driveway court, the, the garage court. And one question I had is, what if you rotated the garage so it's a front-facing garage and you combine the two courts so that instead of having one in the front and one on the uh, in, on the side, you somehow combine those and, and pull in there and move the house up, so that you now have room to, to do, do an adequate buffer on the on the on that side of the house. Um, I I recognize that it screws up the the pool access, but the, by the way, that's something else that's going to require some blasting, um, putting the pool in. Um, but I wonder if there's not some way to deal with that. I mean, that's that's another tail that's wagging the dog. That the, that maybe there's another orientation for the pool or uh, some other way that you could make it work so that you could get the house off that off that property line, a little, sort of the lower left hand side. Yeah, it's too tight. It, it's too I, mean, tight. I can see right now that Norways are just going to be. What, uh, yes, uh, Roy McDowell, the McDowell Company. Um, the other option to think about is, and I, I understand your concern with 11 feet, 10 years down the road, the spruce will be right in there, rushing, rushing the house. right up against it. Right. So the other option is, why don't we consider taking those out and putting in some 10 to 12 foot emerald? Uh, what's what, what's uh, wrong with moving the house for it? Well, I think that's kind of the tail wagging the dog. I think. What the house location? No, I'm saying shifting the house. I think if why. Why do you think that's the tail wagging the dog? That's the whole problem. Well, a couple of concerns I have. One is, you know, I'm not the architect, but by spinning the garage, you'd be, as you're driving up looking at the front of the house, you'd, you'd be looking at garage doors as opposed to right now where well, they're on the side. Well, on the other hand, what you do, what, what not looking at garage doors does, and maybe it's the tail wagging the dog for you, but for the guy next door, that's the whole dog. Um, what if you know, the story you're talking about the, uh, the guy, the, the people down here on the lower left? Yeah, yeah. 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 those are the people I'm concerned about. Uh, no, what I'm saying is, if we if we look at the other ways, and we don't have to worry about that 12 feet because those aren't going to be any bigger than six feet across. I understand using a tall kilometer type form, but yeah. I, I think one. number one, it's very unnatural. Look. Very artificial. Um, well, it's formal. It's very formal and. This, this is a very really this is a wooded site, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But there are there are other there are other columnar type material we can look at, whether it's cedars or right. some other plus, version. Plus and plus the, the other option is why can't we move that forward and bring those trees from the right? Well, is that well then you take that out was, the existing trees. Yeah. No, but I'm saying bringing the screening up. How much room do you have for her? Uh, you were talking about bringing this. We have about from we have a lot of room here, but where the ledge is, it's yeah. about. Uh, Eight to fifteen feet in that area. So we're we're placing the trees about eight to eleven feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I just think it'll just be really unnatural. Oh, yeah. right. It would just be so easy to slide it. How it close is so your, easy. How close is your setback from the living room to the top of the line? Um, the, the, from the, it is about, yeah. at, this, the narrow, at, the, narrow at the narrowest, it is about, I believe, uh, seven to eight feet. Yeah, so, so we're just talking, I think. Seven to eight feet with the key. setback? Is your setback? Setback line. Setback line, from the setback line. From the ste setback line, yeah. not the property line. Not the property line, no. So, so the limit of work, is that what you're talking about? No, the setback line, setback. yeah. Setback line. So if I may jump in from the architectural perspective. Um, we fully understand uh, two issues. One is that the trees proposed are too close to the house. And secondly, we want to improve the mitigation to the neighbor. Well, the house is too close to the, I think the, right, right. the house itself is too close Correct. To, the set, to the setback line and to the, to the other yes. lot line. So, so I think the key is to slide, if I may get, slide the house in its forecourt uh, another 10 feet in this direction, and I think we, we can reset that the pool is not centered on the breakfast room, but it in turn centers on the kitchen or the family room. So, so the pool alignment can be adjusted successfully. And if we can have a landscape solution that if the house shifts along this axis, <coughs> then we can improve, expand the distance to the neighbor and improve the planting options mm -hmm. in that. I think that's doable. I don't think 10 feet's enough, though. Uh, well, 15, 20. Yeah, I'm 20, I, you know, at minimum. Um, we'll well, allow, allow us to study it and come back, but uh, we hear what you're saying. Okay. Somewhere in the 20-foot okay. the, the range, uh, uh, the high teens, allow us to I wanna, massage it. I want to offer a, a suggestion just to consider when we go back and stuff. If you look at this, we consider rotating that the axis of our house about 40 degrees uh, clockwise, so that you know your your living room is up facing the, the facing to the west north, west northwest, okay, and your pool instead of coming off at an angle, which takes up a lot more space, mm -hmm. perhaps is uh, adjusted so that it's more in line with the house. So you have more space for doing buffer on that side of the pool as well as on this side of the house. Excellent suggestion. The reason for its current alignment had to do with solar orientation, such that um, if this is north, we wanted to allow both a summertime. Right now, we're approaching the summer solstice, so the sun's coming in roughly uh, 20 degrees above the western horizon line, and in the winter, it's 20 degrees below. So. The re and we, we, we struggled over this in the initial <coughs> alignment is to get uh, sunsets during half the year penetrating the rear main living spaces. So that was uh, the, the, the uh, perhaps the single most design factor that produced all our problems. It, it does, that orientation, David, too, that does minimize the sort of direct impact on the, on the Right, the, the, down there. The, the, the shallow going from this mm -hmm. to this. You know, otherwise they get to they see more and more of the front of the house, um, which I think it, you know, that's that's maybe a good thing. Um, uh, I understand both those points, but I think we can shift that house. Make it more. Make, yeah. Just for another one, for the forecourt, which is highly formalized. How many cars would that hold? Um, you know, probably four, maybe. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's, it looks bigger than it is. I mean, it's wide. It looks, looks like it's the entire length of the house, pretty much. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, the it's, main uh, part of the house. About, you know, <coughs> 60 by 30. What, what's that? It's like six, it's 60 long. Yeah. Anyway, my point was you've got a big infiltration basin up there, right? Um, at, by your driveway? Uh, over here, right here. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be kind of cool to have that all be contiguous with one another? Do you mean under? Yeah. I mean, it, could you put the driveway over? I think it would function better. I, I don't know. I mean, having you know, if you think of that as a parking lot instead of the forecourt. Boy, and, that sounds like a tough place to get in. And you're up. parking. You could looks like you could get you, you know six cars in there. They could get in, but they could. They'll have a hell of a time getting out. 
Um, it's all one maybe it would be better to consolidate those uh, those areas somehow, in, in, um, or so if if there really is a big you know a big push to, ha to find parking spaces for six cars. So so there are two elements of that four part. One one is that the sixty foot dimension is the standard dimension for a parking garage to have you know writing and parking. Yeah, but in. then you can back out. Right, but, but well, in this case you can only back straight out and then you're stuck because there's no way to turn you know the car correct and in a sense we won't be anticipating six people parking there it's more like for the two or three cars of the delivery truck so for 98 percent of the time it's going to function for the visitor and the delivery truck but the main reason for it why don't have the delivery truck just park on the driveway because it's only you know 12 feet wide and well, you, you have all that traffic going up and down it's the driveway. It's really frontal presentation. Right, so, so yeah, it's, it's actually it's just a formal, it's the formal device. It's, it's a design a frontal device. Presentation it's not about parking. Front of the house. Right, it, 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 it exposes the front facade. It's not... Um, it's a rival. It's, it's wide, but it's not extraordinarily deep. And I mean, I still think you could do a very pretty entrance up there, but maybe yeah. not have it be a big parking pad. You have the parking... You, you, well, what, one of the things that, that it does... Roy, is is it ma makes the you, makes you have to push the grades down, so, see, b below that lower point on the on the forecourt, those grades could if that weren't there, those grades could be fanned out quite a bit, so you don't get anywhere near that kind of steep grade going on. I, I mean, it might improve the. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, I think that lower corner actually comes out of the out of the natural grade, but. Um, well, there's a there's a there's a. Big regrading right right below the forecourt going on. I, you know. Right, I think that's blending. Uh, it's blending some of with the, the existing ledge and then some. Uh, and I, I think it's actually filling right. along. It's, 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 it's more building cut. Yeah, uh, uh, in that part. But does it have to be built, built, pressed or can it be fanned out? One of the things that, that's going on with the site is that it the site is trending from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. Yeah. So, and, and one of the issues that we keep hammering over and over again is that the, the designs today all have to be sitting on a surface as flat as this table. And for a 10,000 square foot house, the size table you need gets to be big. And it, so it spreads, the con it spreads things out. You're, you're, you're pushing the contours back. You're pushing them out in order to get that flat surface. And, we keep saying, why can't we design more with the existing contour so we have less of this regrading and less of the sense that you have to put everything on a flat tabletop? And that would be, that might help here. Um, now you still have your big house, but maybe shifting. Maybe but the garage could be the the they said three they were, steps up. Yeah, right, if you look at the elevation, it's absolutely flat. Right. Um, and the site isn't flat. It, the, the site, you're correct in saying the site isn't flat. So from the front of the garage court, it's 275, or from the, the, it's 275, and the rear of the house is actually 282. So we do have a pretty big change between the front yeah. and the back. But you're trying to make that flat, so. No, that's, that's our proposed. Well, the house itself is sitting on a flat. I'm looking at the elevations. There's no, there's no topographical change. Those there, don't so. reflect the. Uh, those are just the, the house. Yeah, yeah but, but it's you're talking about the landscape. Oh, I'm you're talking, talking about, about the landscape. You're talking about the actual. I'm talking house. about the. Okay. Uh, the I understand. Right. Also, the whole idea, as I know you know, of um, shingle style is, is it's asymmetrical, and yet you have this very formal symmetrical court in the middle of it. So I think that uh, parking court. So I think you could probably do something really interesting that might go with the house better. Well, uh, to quote my, my colleague, we will study. We're going to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you climb? I, 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 I loving the idea of having a parking lot in front of the house. I beg your pardon? Is your client really loving the idea of a parking lot? No, it's kind of like. Well, um, you say parking lot, but I, I think when you look at the architecture of it, you look at the the uh, stone surface in the center and the border, uh, whether it be cobbles or pavers, it uh, can be actually quite attractive. Yeah, it, it's kind of an arrival point. You go down this long driveway, like you're going to a farm or a villa or anything in the country, and when you get there, there's some kind of courtyard, you know, and, and, and there you see the house, whether it's P-stone or 
you know, all through Europe, there's some, so it is a bit of a European reference. It's a matter of how, how formal that arrival yeah, point right. is. So, this is Western conservation. Yeah, no, no, I mean, <laughs> it's like, well, I, think, I think a couple of things. Number one, is, I know you're aware, whenever we have meetings with you, we take Phileas copious thoughts on what you say, so when we come back, we try and address them all. Yeah. For instance, when we had a, a site walk, I mean, we spent a lot of time making sure we try to cover almost all your points. A lot of fill, trees coming down, elevations, and uh, I think we did that. So I think these points you're making, not only will we, will we look at them very closely, but we're actually bringing back probably some representative blown up samples of what that courtyard would look like, or whatever it may be, relative to the house itself, and not just a tiny little picture. But also think about sliding it over. Can I answer? We're gonna, we're gonna we, oh, we're going to slide yeah. the house. Yeah. But as Eric points out to this uh, uh, Google satellite map, map, that the house is embedded in this wonderful landscape next to the Nuremberg Reservoir. And we do take a long driveway. So while we can make it less formal, the idea of an arrival port is, is, a, is a good thing to say, here, we've arrived. There's the house. You know? and, and, and it's... You know, not it, it, it's it's as far as Weston goes, one of the more wooded sites that you go in, and and so we do want to have some sense of uh, excitement when you come to the beautiful house. Roy, did you have anything you wanted to say? Could, uh, Brian, how confident are you about the ledge exactly? I know you've made test areas, but do you have some sense for where the house is relative to the ledge? For the house? Where the proposed house is going to uh, Not as much. We've been more focused on finding soils that will support a septic system and for uh, stormwater management. Yep. So we've tested those areas pretty exhaustively. Um, we have done a few tests around where the house is, and we know we've got ledge roughly four feet below grade. So, um, but it's a little speculatory because we've dug you know two or three holes within you know, or close proximity to that footprint. So they're consistent, but ledge doesn't necessarily, you know, just right. kind of follow right. that it's same contour. It's not so. necessarily consistent. Yeah. yeah. If, I mean, the sense that I have is this this is a massive footprint. I mean, it's 4,000 square feet, roughly. Um, and if it means blasting, we're talking about an enormous amount of uh, material that's going to have to be removed. Um, huge amount of site disturbance on a, a relatively large area. Um, it's massive in that sense. It's also massive in the sense that on the first floor, I'm looking at the elevations, 11 foot first floor, eight and a half foot second floor. So it's very close to the, the maximum six inches, you said, below the maximum ridge line. So it, to me, it presents a pretty massive looking house. Um, I respect the orientation to the closest neighbor, and I think that is a, is a good thing. Um, I just like to see the scale of the house um, reduced in, in mass or reduced in footprint. The impact is just, is, to me, very large. It's, it's going to affect the neighbors for a long time. Um, a couple of comments. One is on the 4,000 square foot footprint, 1,000 of that is garage, which will not have a basement or blasting below it. And the basement area itself will not have a sports court, so it'll be uh, the normal uh, basement depth. Forgive me, I just want to say, I'm looking at the very first floor, it says 3915. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, okay, well then my mistake. Okay. Then, then the actual footprint is then another 1,000 square feet. But um, the, um, you know, sort of doing this for the last 20 years and presenting before this board, the average size of every house we present is this size. This is not an increase. I, I don't think it's so much the size. I think it's the idea that the site presents construction challenges. And on a site where you don't have to blast, in other words, there isn't the same impact. But because this is going to require a large amount of work in order to prepare the house for it, it's going to have a large impact on the neighborhood. That's, that's my well, point. I'm very my experience confident. is that we're blasting on every single project in Westland. It's built on a rock. We, we blasted on 24 Meadowbrook. The house is this size. The footprint is this size. It's actually larger because it has a first floor master. And, you, you know, we're so used to and really, quite frankly, really good at it that we're not going to disturb the neighbors. They will not be impacted. We will not 
cause any damage to the neighbor's house. I can say that with great confidence because we've done it time and time again. I mean, this represents the average or below average for the last 20 years in West America. And we're, we're the people that are doing it here every, every year. And we're the best, one of the best that are doing it. We scale down the house. We break down the scale. It's not a big monolithic colonial mansion with two-story columns. And it's buried in the middle of a five-acre lot, even, uh, even though part of its conservation, it's a five-acre lot buried in way hundreds of feet off of the nearest public way. And, you know, it, in my view, it's one of the least impactful projects we've presented to this board. And I know you're new, but I'm just sharing my opinion. I've been doing it here for a long time. Yeah, some of us have too. You more than me. I will defer to you, Al. Uh oh. Thanks, you. <laughs> That's well, a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's a good thing. I have to ask you a question which has is not really, you know, part of the planning board oversight and stuff. Why have the dining room and the living room in their location they have? It seems backwards to me. The dining and living room? Well the dining room wants to be closest to the kitchen. The kitchen wants to be closest to the garage. Um that, oh, oh, that one, this, this plan. Yeah. This I'm going to blame my builder for. Good. Okay. Well, I like the floor plan. Yeah. I'm going to blame him. I, I think, wanted to I put just it. I think they're backwards. I tell him to put it in the regular place every time. I agree, by the way, I agree with you. Well, you're, you're, you're very smart. smart. <laughs> <laughs> Is the pool essential for attracting, attracting the kind of buyer <coughs> we, we think we're going to get? It, it's essential that we were approved. They may decide not to do it, uh, but a lot of a lot of these people, a lot of our market wants a pool. A lot of people are sort of giving up on pools in New England. It's such a pain in the neck. I totally agree. Yeah, but his people are all from California. <laughs> but the real estate market <laughs> so has yeah, all these yeah. 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 people are learning about yeah. pools. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> yes. Yeah. If we do approve a pool, the fence. I know. Mm -hmm. The fence gets to be an issue. Where is it? Where is it? That's a good question. Yeah. That's a very yeah, good thank question. You. So the fence goes from the corner of this half of here up around to the top of the slope where we're grading, comes around on the bottom of this slope and then hits the back of the house here. So it encompasses the whole rear yard. So the whole rear yard. Yeah, yeah, and it's a black, it would be on the black. Uh, uh, no yeah. top bar. Yeah, top bar. Again, this is spec. So if the client, one of the things we run into on the on situations like this is that that's the, that's the fence you're proposing. But the guy that buys the house might not like it there. He might want a much bigger area you have to come back to your board. I know. Just, just and then, no, we've been, been there. Like, been there. Please. It gets to be a mess yeah. uh, because they might want to expand the yard that way, and um, you know, and, and because Fluffy the dog wants more, more area to run around in. Safety. Uh, safety. Uh, safety. Safety. Well, well, it's always safety. safety. Yeah. Always. Um, I, think, but, I think Mark needs to make it clear to the client: this is the approved plan, and this is what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. I, I mean, we'll make the client painfully aware of this process and steer them away from any amendments because this team does not want, once we're approved, this team does not want to come Save back. Save this videotape. You Make won't. them watch it four or five times. Then. Yeah. then they'll see the end. Yeah, you know, we'd like to have a call. That'll, that'll do it. Maybe have them watch a few of them. <laughs> oh, we don't want to put them to sleep. <laughs> the DVD collection. Oh, are I, 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 I just, I'm just asking, you know, I mean, is it how critical is it? Um, because it's also restraining the house too. I understand for the, for the marketing. You know, it's probably fifty-fifty whether that pool will ever happen. If I were, if I, I don't want to build it as a spec. You know, our our track, our history of the last three or four projects has we've always found the client. If it were to be built as a spec, I wouldn't plan on the pool. However, just knowing that these people may want a pool, we. We, we would like to get it approved in the event that they want it. Well, we'll have to write really tight uh, conditions on that. Where's the generator on this place? Right. Till the left, right behind the family room? Or? Yeah. 
Yeah. Right there overlooking the neighbors to the Seriously? Yeah. Why is that the living room? Yeah, it's not right there. Why is it there? We'll, we'll move it up by the cabana. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. No sense. Yeah. You, you still have to meet the, you know, the, the, the sound, the sound, the, yeah. Yeah, but it'll be a lot easier. It'll be a lot easier than that. We're so far away <laughs> yeah. from what we've got to prove. We should be okay. Not where you are now. No, no, no. no, no that, never make the 40 D. Right. No, no, that's the exact. We don't want to impact that uh, name to the south east. We're going to move it up mm -hmm. to the other side of the house. To the right side of the cabana and screen. That actually brings where the ACs, where the condensers and stuff. They're scattered around, like you know. Uh, yeah, uh, they're not all gathered there on the south side. Uh, no, we. But you know, the the ACs are are these days are less an impact to neighbors mm -hmm. than the general. Yeah, but, they're still added noise. Absolutely. And if what about the neighbors' air conditioning? Yeah, they probably have window units. No, they don't. <laughs> Really? You know, it's amazing though the new the no. new generators with the insulated housing. Mm -hmm. You can't even have them running. Mm. The new ones they very good. Good, well, that's good. Do, do, put in a new one. Use that. Um, what what we find have found is that a 40 dBA at the property line is a pretty good standard. It's, yeah. it's not that hard to read. All right, we'll have to continue. Um, Betsy, what date do we continue to? August 2nd, August 17th, we're going to be there now. Um, okay. Um, how much time do you think you'll need to revamp things a little bit? Tomorrow morning. Pretty quickly. Pretty okay. quickly. We're, just um, sliding, we're sliding the house and, and fixing the things. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's got to be some landscape changes. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that'd that'd be be that'd be be three yeah. three weeks would be would be ideal. Tomorrow morning was a, 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 a bigger speech. He, he needs a week. Okay. okay. Um, don't, don't say that because you yeah, you could be held to it. Yeah. It was July second or July twenty third. We have a July sixteenth meeting. July sixteenth. July sixteenth, I think, would be perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes. we'll to July 16th, one time, Betsy. Um, Eric's having a baby, uh, his wife's having a baby. Uh, um, it's a little nervous. So we'll have to get it done ahead of time. Okay. Right, but we need it at least that week ahead. So mm -hmm. that's, the hearing yeah. would be the 16th, we'd be the 9th or something. Yeah, let's make that clear. One week before the meeting, right. everything has to be in, okay? So you're on the 9th. No later than the night. No later right. than the night for submittal materials. And I'd like to see everything digitally mm -hmm. ahead of time, which we often get. No, we don't, but, but we no, often do, but yeah. we don't always no, get. No, exactly. So be right. able to study the landscape plan and mm -hmm. yeah. the site plan would be really helpful. Well, that's three weeks. The night is three weeks. You want that one in PDFs? Yeah. 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 So send them to me. Yeah. Um, so what time does it? So the 16th is. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, um, so 8.15. 8.15? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. 8.30, sorry. 8.30, July 16th, 8.30. Good. Thank, 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 thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>